Good evening. Oh, good afternoon. It depends on where you are found. To all the Abazonians on ground zero. To all the freedom fighters. To all the self defense forces in ground zero. To all the Abazonians in America. All the Abazonians in Africa. All the Abazonians in Europe. Australia, China, Hungary, everywhere in Europe, Dubai, I greet you people. I greet you people with much love. I'm very, 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 very happy for now. I salute your efforts. I am very, 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 very happy. At first, I've never been happier as I am now. Because why? I know we must have our independence. It's now that I'm realizing that what my father told me before dying, he was saying, as an old man, because old people, the words are, of old people are the words of wisdom. My father is late, His Excellency Chief Ayama Ete Otun, the former SNC. Shaman. I've always been doubting. I say, what's going to happen? How, can we, how are we going to do? How can we remember that country? I was totally confused. Everywhere I go, when I saw from Cameroon, I said, no, but Cameroon is a French speaking country. I went to Holland and they told me Cameroon is French speaking. I started explaining to them. They cannot believe. Even in Belgium. I say, wonderful. So now I'm very, very, very happy. At least the world knows that there's a country, Ambazonians have their country, which is Ambas land. Ambazonians have their country, which is Ambas land. Or Ambazonia. The whole world knows. Even the United Nations knows. But they are playing some games. When I found out, when I realized that these people, these people know and they are playing games, is when I came to France, I, I went and declared asylum. And my father said, me, Why are you coming to France? And I said, Don't oh, I like to go where they tie them out so that I will know. But I went there. When I went there, it was even interesting, you know, seeing me. I gave them everything. I told them the truth about Cameroon, how the Abazonas have been treated, why we are struggling. I gave them everything from AAC 1, 2, from the beginning of independence, everything. And I even thought they would not give me a grand master, political asylum. Because I gave them everything. They even told me to draw this, I draw the map. They asked me to draw the map of Ambassador, I draw the map. They told me to draw the organigram, I drew everything. Told them, I even told them I have the national anthem with me, I even sang it. Freedom, uh, land, alumnus, glory, or some everything. The problem is that I gave them everything. After this, I was granted um, asylum. I said, what? So these people know that we have a problem. And they are the cause of this problem. They are just in the quiet. If you can give me asylum, grant me a political asylum, don't they? That way? Well, let's just keep that on my side. That is just some, but I'm very, very happy. I'm very, very happy because now the world knows that we are a people. We are an independent people. The Abazonians are independent. Come green, come sun. We must have the independence. Okay, for now, I will, before I start even bringing out some small discussion that I have to tell you people, and every other thing concerning the bad government of La Republic and um, who oh, I tell them as the evil that men do live after them. The evil that La Republic does is living after La Republic. And I will talk a bit about those who feel they can still be waiting for federation. 
something that in AA1, AAC1, AAC2, 1994-1995, we struggled, our father struggled, some were killed, you know, some were imprisoned, some disappeared. Up to today, they are still struggling. They don't want to hear them. Even now, they are still struggling no way. They are still thinking that it, that federation is an option. But I will give them some small advice. Also, I would like to try to tell the interim government to try to throw some light on the national anthem as I will, you know, play it. Then with the other, which at times some, you know, activists, Ambazonian activists for freedom, freedom fighters, at times they play another anthem, they feel, people feel that that is also an anthem of the struggle. So at least they try to differentiate and let's know which one is the great anthem. Because the, the one of freedom song, which is, Freedom land, a love most glorious, King of King divine, the name we praise, defend our sovereign land, break every sort of spite and scorn, and let us forth uncover by fear when our rights of honor is over. Let our songs of triumph fill the sky and our faith and steadfast courage them as a mighty rock win from the hands the crown of victory freedom march songs of liberty let our banner fall in a prosperous wing by the bountiful hands Resist this land of freedom to exist among the nation proud and free of the vast from shore to Aku, from the surging waves of Ambas Bay, from the rocks and reeks of Buya to the heights of Kilo Mountain. Let African voice in freedom songs. Rise to sublime heights and magnify. They are God's and great defender. Count us in the end to be quiche in peace and unity and heritage. O land undefined. Freedom march, songs of liberty. Let a banner floating in a prosperous way by the bountiful hands, raising the land of freedom to exist among the nation proud and free. So some people, some activists of, you know, Amazonia, they play this. And now, the order, which is the real national anthem, as I will say, to differentiate so that some, because some people are confused. So that the interim government should throw more light on this. This is the one. Let me put it for you people, please. Shall be the stars above. 
is the watchman of this nation. So land of freedom, you shall live it as it is in of our needs, of our needs. Children will be like the stars above. What is the watchman of this nation? Okay, now if we listen to a prestigious national anthem. I would like to tell you one of the most important things we have for ourselves, for our country, as Abazonians. The most important thing which we have, which the Republic is afraid of and doesn't want to see is almost more than even the gun that people are using. This is our flag. This flag, as you see. One of my friends told me this flag is one of the best well decorated flags he has ever seen. So this flag is more important than any other thing. So it should be respected and everybody should have it in his house. So that when there is protest anywhere, everybody should present the flag. And now I would like to give you people, you know, throw some light on the flag so that you should know the importance of the flag or to, you know, to interpret the flag. Because you cannot have a flag, you don't know how to interpret it. It's just like holding a gun and you don't know how to use it. So I will start by interpreting the, the flag so that you people should know. Those who don't know should know. I should teach also the young ones who are growing. This flag, as you see it, it is on a blue background. And there are five, or um, there are, excuse me, there are four lines, white lines. There is a dove carrying an olive plant in the beam. The dove is surrounded by 13 stars. Okay. This is a prestigious flag. The blue background represents the sky. The sky is a limit for a struggle. So everybody should know that we have to struggle until we reach the sky. We will never give up for this struggle. We are Bazonians will never give up. The sky is our limit. That means Boya is our limit. This flag was continue staying in Boya as it was on 1st October. So the blue background is the sky. The sky is our limit. The four white lines on the blue background represents transparency. 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 Interim government, listen to it. Transparency. All the Abazonians want transparency. If there is no transparency, there is mix up of ideas or conflicting ideas. People will start fighting. Some people will even make the movie, catch from people in Nigeria, lock them up because of no transparency. So transparency is very important. When you are doing something, look at the flag. Because transparency, it is in government. Everybody wants transparency. Transparency is not so easy, but the, the president, His Excellency Sako, should fight, fight to show that transparency is the key, one of the keys of the Amazonians. Because everybody likes transparency. People cannot be struggling and struggling. They will not know what is 
We're only going on with the struggle in all the domains. The 13 stars, or let me first of all, the dove that is carrying the olive plant on the beach. Orif plant and the dove, with the dove carry, represent peace. That after everything, we need peace. And the 13 stars represent the 13 counties. So this is the importance of this flag. I believe everybody now at least can know. If I give somebody to ask you what is meant by this or what is mean means by this, you will tell him this is this, this is this on the flag. Okay. Now let me come to some points now. To start with first, let me just inform you people that there's a news going on. That some fake people, some people, group of people that are trying to negotiate that, the one the negotiating with peace. I don't know the peace that they are negotiating in Cameroon. Who can negotiate peace if somebody like His Excellency Susisko is still in prison? And the 37 other leaders are still in prison. They don't even know, we don't even know, we don't even see pictures about them. Nothing. Peace when. The people who have to negotiate peace are outside. So it says it said Ababala, Kadimatumi, and uh, the you know the, the, the some of the some of the, 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 the people from the American embassy and others are trying to negotiate the peace. I don't know the type of peace they're talking. We are in a revolution. They are just negotiating their own peace. For themselves, but we are in a revolution. Oh, forget about that one. We are in a revolution. You are negotiating peace when they are killing people, when they are refugees in, in Nigeria, people in the hospital, they are still killing people, doing all atrocity reports. You stand there, you are negotiating peace. Just say people want to take some money. Yes, because you said that Abobala is trying to negotiate peace. Which type of peace? He cannot negotiate peace for the Abazonians. Abazonians don't want any peace for now. We want independence. If he negotiates for independence, it's good. But no peace. Because federation has failed. All everything has failed for 56 years. So, the only thing is just independence that we want. So if Abobala is going there, let him just tell them to release everybody, grant you know, BBC Mancho, everybody release. Or we can articulate the discourse for every person released, then, you know, the grand independence will make peace with them. That is a message to the people who are going, that they are going peace. They won't make peace with, with Abazuna. Abazuna, they have declared war on Abazuna. Let's fight the war first so that when peace is coming, they will not, they thought we were just joking. Okay, let's just that is was that was just an aside. Okay, let me start. Ambazonians, Ambazonians, Ambazonians all over the world. I thank you people very much. In my last video, in my last video, a message to La Republic, prayer, and what to be done. For Amazonia's victory. The Almighty God, the Almighty God, heard my prayers, and at least two of our leaders were released. But the release of these leaders have a Christian sign. Why are they released? And the others are not released. Under what conditions 
are they released? What news do they have to bring from their release? And finally, why are they so quiet since their release? No matter how long it takes, the truth will prevail. Nothing can be hidden under the sun. The Judah is carrier are already known. But let us not concentrate on this. For the IG is still carrying out its research and no long from now the results will be published. My fellow Ambazonians, what we shall concentrate on is the struggle to reach Boya in the name of Jesus Christ. The Republic is now more confused. They are arresting themselves to prove that prayer has the power to perform miracles. They are arresting their ministers for stealing and buzzing large sums of monies for many years. And great part of this money and Brazil is monies from Sonara, CDC, timber, cocoa, coffee, gold, etc. from Amazonia. In one of the minister's house, among many others, called Alain Mimbe Ngo, 100 million fan CFA was discovered in cash. Cash, fiscal cash. And why trying to escape? No, excuse me. Bazi Atanam Kuna stole for a long time 100 million. And while trying to escape, he was arrested in Nigeria. Now the Republic is confused and is running out of budget and cannot even be able to pay their teachers in some provinces. Even the, the race that had to take place in the Republic was cancelled because of money. This is a good job done by the Amazonians. I appreciate it. Paul Bia was in China to beg for money and ask for help to carry out water project. What a shame. Ministers are stealing millions of millions of funds in cash in everything, stealing this. They have the money with them. And the president are begging for money. Now Pobia is arresting, arresting his own ministers. Soon he himself will be arrested. Because even this robots he took about some years ago, he took a large sum of money that France gave, he took the money alone and went to a hotel and spent it, squandered everything there. Let me assure you people, very soon La Republic will start arresting members of the SDF. But for the meantime, let me show you a short video. A short video where a lot of money was stuck inside um, Alain Mimbe Ngo's house. You can see, and you gonna show him on the ground. Monies on the ground. Anyway, heaps of monies. Monies from Amazonia.
je me tente pas, toi aussi, ne tente pas. Hein. Pourquoi pas dire que c'est pas moi D'accord Pourquoi pas dire que c'est pas moi Ça c'est ce qu'on appelle là. Une montagne. Ça c'est une île. Une île de Maurice. Montagne. Vous n'avez jamais eu ça. Maurice inside the minister's house and the president is outside. Je vais vous Ask in China to help for money. Uh, yeah. Yes. So you can like Ministers have China. millions of millions in their houses. That's plenty a lot of money. Ne vous étonnez pas, hein. Moi, je travaille. Allez, bise. Excuse me, that is the video. Okay, let's continue. Please excuse me, I wanted to put the next video, but I'll do that very soon. Okay. Let me assure you, people, very soon, the Republic we we'll start arresting members of the SDF militants and other political parties in Amazonia to teach them a lesson that they told them to go out of the National Assembly. You can see with me that at the last session of the National Assembly, when Honorable Poppy in China was struggling to put on the table the problem, the genocide problem being carried out by the government of La Republic. The whereabouts and the conditions of the president, His Excellency, Sisiko Ayuktabe, the other 37 and the other 37 leaders extradited and also trying to know the condition of extradition without a treaty from Nigeria. And also the major taking concerning the refugees in Nigeria. And when will the war stop and peace that is independence in Abazonia? And he was stopped so many times by the Speaker of the House of Assembly. Let me show you the video. Let me try if I can bring up the video. It's always good to see.
Okay, you. Okay, you will listen now. Please excuse me for the time. You will listen to. I have five or about five what questions happened? to ask the National Assembly, the Minister of External Relations, sir. The first question, as you know, um, the part of the country, a good part of this country, is at war. And the High Commissioner for Refugees at the United Nations, in his last report, reported that, excuse the tautology, reported that he couldn't have access to the refugees of Cameroon because the government, refugees from Cameroon, because the government would not grant him authorization. I would like you to tell us if that is true or false. And why is it that the government would not grant authorization to an international body to come and check on the situation of refugees within the country? So that was the first question, sir. The second question, still on the question of refugees, how many Cameroonians are refugees in Nigeria? What is the government doing about it? And when can we expect the repatriation of these Cameroonians back to the homeland? Please give us simple, straight answers as I'm giving the questions. How many refugees are there? When can we expect them back? In the meantime, what kind of treatment are they receiving? The third question, sir, has to do with uh, certain Cameroonians who have disappeared from the face of the earth. I'm talking about uh, a gentleman called Seseko Ayuk Tabe. And I think, I say I think because we don't know how many, 47 of persons who accompanied him. Where is he? Or where are they at this point in time? They will realize because there are rumors about there being some place between Nigeria and Cameroon. You, as our Minister of External Relations, I think you are the right person to tell us where these persons are because they disappeared from a hotel in Nigeria. And as of now, they have not been heard from or seen by the public since. What is the state of their affairs? What is, their, what is their health like? Where are they? When can we expect to see them? That is question number three, sir. Question number four, legalist who, that you are. The question number four concerns the notions of extradition. How to extradite persons between countries where extrad extradition treaties exist. Does the treaty, the extradition treaty of Nigeria, permit? Right, Honorable Speaker. Yes. Right, right, Honorable Speaker. We are the general questions. No, it's general question, sir. No, no, no. Because we are going to enter the text. No, no, no. We are going to enter the text, Mr. Speaker. No, no. And that's the rules of the Assembly. Okay, I will not... I will then talk... I will talk about... I will talk about Cameroon, sir. I am not a cartoon. I will now speak about Cameroon if you insist. Can I? I cannot speak no. about Cameroon. They will never accept. Please, I think uh, the subject is sufficiently important that I request the right honourable speaker. I am not speaking about Nigeria, sir. I, I am talking about Cameroon, sir, and I will go. Permit me to talk. I will not talk about. I will not talk about Nigeria. I will talk about Cameroon then, if you will permit me. I need your coverage, sir. No. 
So I cannot talk about Cameroon. <laughs> that is Cameroon. That is like the public. They will never accept you to talk. Yes. I'm talking. I'm talking. No doubt about Cameroon. 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 Can I speak about Cameroon? Blocking. I am not a, a parliamentarian from Germany. I'm a parliamentarian from Cameroon. I will defend the interests of Cameroon at all points. And I request the right honorable speaker to do the same. Please. We are talking about the interests of Cameroon. May I now uh, uh, continue my address to the uh, Minister of External Relations? I will not talk about Nigeria. If that bothers you, I wonder why it bothers you. I will, I will speak about Cameroon. I don't have to speak about Nigeria, no, about Germany. On that, I agree with you. Now, please, the fourth question I was going to ask you, and I'm now on Cameroon. There is a war going on in Cameroon. There is a war going on in Cameroon, and I'm talking about the methods of warfare. We are told, we are told that mines are being used, contrary to international treaty which the Minister of Foreign Affairs has signed and defense. We are told that um, helicopter gunships are being used, contrary to uh, using against populations. The purpose of all laws we pass is to secure our citizens. Now, if this is, if this, if this is true, that mines are used and helicopter gunships are being used. How can you assure the Cameroonian people that the ordinary citizens will be safe? The last question, sir, and you notice that I've been doing everything to say within my 10 minutes, if the speaker will permit me. The last question. You cannot permit me to say within my 10 minutes? What is the problem? Can I finish? The federalists know that they will not accept to speak. They will not give them the right to speak. No, I'm not being a racist. Mr. Speaker, you are using you are using some terminology which is very harsh. I am not being evasive. I am not being evasive. I don't have any reason to talk about Germany, please. May I use my ten minutes? I am talking about Cameroon as I must. It's my duty. Please. If you have problems with Nigeria or with me, I, I will not talk about Nigeria. Now the last question. The last question, Mr. Minister of Ex External Affairs, because you constitute one of the major links for peace in this country. All the treaties you sign with Germany, which the speaker would like to hear, is so that we can have peace and progress. At the moment I'm talking to you, that peace and progress is threatened. It is threatened by an escalation of war within the National Front. It is threatened by a destruction of the economy, by shooting at citizens indiscriminately. These are the things that threaten the peace, which treaty we are trying to increase or to improve. And that is why I am asking you, Mr. Minister of External Relations, take the message to your boss that Cameroon is at war, that we need the peace. Take the message to your boss that the economy of certain parts of this country has gone to the dogs. Take the message to your, bo to your boss. Take the message to him that citizens have been shot like birds in the air. Please. And that, irrespective of what the, the, speaker, uh, the speaker says, Cameroon is at war. Now the question I ask you is, when will this dialogue take place so that we can stop the war? When will the, inter, the dialogue between citizens take place? Or do you want us to come here again and stop the assembly? We, don't, we, we have other techniques, but let the message go to him that Cameroon needs peace. I thank you, Mr. Minister, deliver that message for me, and I hope that the uh, right honorable speaker will deliver the same message when he gets there. I thank you. I have five of
Okay, fellow Amazonians, the world at large, you people has, have listened to the, the, the speech by Honorable Fobi Nchida when he's trying to bring out points at the United Nations. He's blocked. That is how they have been blocking, you know, the Abandonians, Abandonians who think that they can be with the Republic for long. This is a clear message to the SDF, all the so-called political parties in Abazonia. Those Abazonians who are for federation and the so-called allies, Ni Jonfu and the chiefs, that are Republic Parliament, SNIC, ministers, SDOs, DOs, regard them as fools and slaves and will never and ever listen to their demands. Will never and ever listen to their demands. Even that federation people are talking, they are wasting their time. We are already at war. They declare war on us, we have to fight the war. And when it is when the, it is time for, for when there's let me tell you when when there's a revolution, there is no other option. It's just the revolution. And the revolution will only end when we will be independent. When we will be independent, we have an independent time when the, 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 this revolution will end. So there is no negotiation. Even what we are hearing now that Abubala and uh, Kandasumi and other people they are joined to go and say they are making peace. I don't know what type of peace they are making. They are just wasting their time. We are already going. Yes. There is no return. We must have our peace. Abazonia is known now all over the whole world. Everywhere they talk about Abazonia. We have a nation. Ambas land is a nation. Abazonia is a nation. We are Abazonians. We will stay in our land. Our children will enjoy the facilities of our land. We have a good gov government. We have transparency. The sky is our limit. Yes. So, this is a good message for the SDF and the other political parties, the chiefs and the other allies. So, a stitch in time saves nine. Abazonians who are thinking that they can support the enemies to be killing Abazonians. You people should take note. Not so long. La Republic will start arresting all of you people. Please join the struggle now. And forget about La Republic so that we can start thinking of how to build a prestigious country, Abazonia. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Please, 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 please. This is the time. For unity, unity, unity. The world is watching to see our unity. The United Nations says he cannot come in, but he is focused on the struggle. Thanks very much to Mr. Matthew Ozi Lee. Say, you are doing a marvelous job for the Amazonians and the United Nations. We, the Amazonians, appreciate you. We, the Amazonians, appreciate your efforts to put the United Nations to the table a strong stand towards the genocide going on in Amazon by Paul Bia Sarujin. Let me try to see if I can bring up the video so that I can see us again.
artist, the journalist, is a very strong journalist, who is out of the inner city video. press on behalf of the free UN Coast for Access. Thanks for doing this exit, uh, uh, exit press conference. I wanted to ask you about a, a, a conflict that seems to have actually gotten worse in the last year, either of despite or some would some say because of UN involvement, and it's the one in Cameroon between the central government and the Anglophone areas. Um, seems like, you know, they turned off the internet. Now, recent, more recently, they've been burning down whole villages. I know that Mr. Fall had gone there, and at least at least I heard him say that, you know, anyone that wants secession is an extremist, which is something that the government uses to actually perform these acts and say that anyone that says that is a terrorist. So I wanted to know, like, how this is a, it's a lesser known or less high, less high profile conflict, but how does DPA, you said you have all this expertise from around the world, but is it possible that sort of the, the former or even current colonial powers have kind of the ear in some cases of, of these kind of a conflicts? And how would you assess the UN's performance in Cameroon? Um, thank you, Mr. Lee. It's worth keeping in mind that the department, that by and large, the Department of Political Affairs um, operates overseas under Chapter 6 of the Charter. That means member state consent. We operate, with, we operate in Chapter 8 in partnerships with regional and sub-regional organizations that are, that are key to our ability to have full understanding and better credibility in our work, but it's Chapter 6. This is not something where the, where the Department of Political Affairs can say, hey, we see a problem, we're going to go, we're going to send out a team or an envoy or something like that. That's not how it works. We have to have the type. We have to be able to um, persuade a country that some outside um, engagement, some outside facilitation, might be of use, and that's hard. This is one of the hardest things that I have seen about working in the Department of Political Affairs. It's one of the hardest things about making prevention work. The Secretary General is, as you've all heard, is very keen on on prevention across the whole spectrum of UN activities, whether it's prevention of childhood disease or prevention of conflict, or prevention of conflict is especially difficult. And I put Cameron in this category um, because we think that there, that there are lessons learned, there are best practices, there are examples in other parts of the world where there have been successful processes that address the concerns of minorities, of, of various ethnic groups of people who feel for one reason or the other disenfranchised that might be useful in Cameroon. But we're not going to be able to just march in there and say, this is what you got to do. That's not the idea and it's not realistic. Um, and so we have a, a sort of ongoing dialogue with the Cameroon authorities about our concerns over what it, over problems in the Anglophone region and what could happen if those if those concerns aren't addressed effectively, but this is this is not the case of the UN being able to go in and saying this is the solution. Even if we ha even when the door is open to UN intervention on conflict prevention under Chapter Six, I don't believe it's wise for the UN to say this is the solution. What the UN should be doing is helping local actors come up with a way forward that addresses grievances in a way that the local owners end up having ownership in that. I think the Cameron, the Cameron is something you're going to, you, we, we need to keep watching. Matthew Lee, Inner City Press, on behalf of the Free UN Coast for Access, thanks for doing this exit, uh, uh, exit press conference. I wanted to ask you about a, a, a conflict that seems to have listed. actually gotten worse in the last year. Listen, listen, Amazonians. Some say because Mr. of the Lee. And it's the one in Cameroon between the central Mr. and the Anglophone area. Mr. Rosili is a very um, strong journalist. Seems like you know, they for the internet now recently they've been burning down whole villages. I listen. know that Mr. Fall had gone there. And at least, at least I heard him say that you know anyone that wants secession is an extremist, which is something that the government uses to actually perform these acts and say that anyone that says that is a terrorist. So I wanted to know, like, how this is a, it's a lesser known or less high, less high profile conflict, but how does DPA, you said you have all this expertise from around the world, but is it possible that sort of the, the former or even current colonial powers have kind of the ear in some cases of, of these kind of a conflicts? And how would you assess the UN's performance in Cameroon? Um, thank you, Mr. Lee. It's worth keeping in mind that the department, that by and large, the Department of Political Affairs um, operates overseas under Chapter 6 of the Charter. That means member state consent. 
We operate with we operate in Chapter Eight in partnerships with regional and sub-regional organizations that are that are key to our ability to have full understanding and better credibility in our work. But it's Chapter Six. This is not something where the, where the Department of Political Affairs can say, "Hey, we see a problem. We're going to go. We're going to send out a team or an envoy or something like that." That's not how it works. We have to have the type. We have to be able to um, persuade a country that some outside um, engagement, some outside facilitation might be of use. And that's hard. This is one of the hardest things that I have seen about working in the Department of Political Affairs. It's one of the hardest things about making prevention work. The Secretary General is, as you've all heard, is very keen on, on prevention across the whole spectrum of UN activities, whether it's prevention of childhood disease or prevention of conflict. But prevention of conflicts is especially difficult. And I put Cameron in this category um, because we think that there that there are lessons learned, there are best practices, there are examples in other parts of the world where there have been successful processes that address the concerns of minorities, of, of various ethnic groups of people who feel for one reason or the other disenfranchised. But my okay, my fellow Amazonians. You have watched the video. United Nations will never come to help you. France will never come to help you. They say come, they'll come to say kill you. British will never help you. No country in the world will come and help you. We have to help ourselves. The United Nations have said it, that they can never come. But they are keeping an eye. So we have to help ourselves to have our independence. We are the people fighting for the independence. It's not the independence of Uribo. It's not the independence of America. It will be the independence of France or British. We have to fight for independence ourselves. To free our country, we have to fight. So it is already gone. And when a revolution is going on, there can never be peace. Except the revolutionaries, they achieve what they want. So now we're already in war. They have declared war on us. So there's no discussion of peace till we have the independence. See, when they say, okay, people have independence, stay on your own, we'll stay on our own, we'll be good friends. That is when there will be peace. So let me tell you, the United Nations will never come. Let them be sitting and waiting that they, they will not, we should fight and fight and send out all the, 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 the Republic uh, terrorists who are in our land. And we have to do it through a very strong word from Sako, our president, Mr. Sako, who says, my dream to Boya. Okay, those will trust everyone uh, to show people what the United Nations is saying, and I appreciate Mr. Matthew Rusi Lee's attitude towards the Abazonia. We call on the United Nations to stop pushing you, Mr. Matthew Rusi Lee, backwards in the press briefing in the United Nations section. And the United Nations should grant you full status as a press journalist in the United Nations. So let all Amazonians on ground zero unite for self-defense. Never in the history of, a, of mankind will any occupier of our land or any Amazonia who assists them to rape, beat, imprison our university students, beat our lawyers, imprison some, kill our citizens, burn our villages with our grandmothers and grandfathers in their houses, send most of our citizens to exile, to exile, kidnap leaders and declare war on us and go free. In order for these terrorists not to go free, 
what do we do or what do we need to do unity 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 to finance my trip to boya and the my trip to boya is a defense forces on ground zero Abazunias in the villages in the forest who are the Abazunias in the hiding in the forest who whose villages have been burned, the refugees in Nigeria, all those who are in captivity by the Republic, all the Abazunians on ground zero, those in hospitals, all those who are in exile in other parts of Africa, America, Jamaica, Europe, Asia, should bear in mind that my trip to Boya is the final solution to reach Boya. All those who have lost their lives in struggle, may their soul rest in perfect peace.